Hi everyone and welcome to this video. Today we're going to talk about continuous integration and how you can implement it in Salesforce. My name is Alba Rivas and I am the developer advocate who's going to guide you through this topic. Let's get into it. This is the fifth video of the DevOps Essentials series. If you haven't watched the previous videos, I recommend you to do so. You can do that following this link. Continuous integration, CI for short, is the practice of regularly integrating your code into a source control repository with code from other developers. Typically, you execute automated workflows to ensure your code quality and prevent bugs. Generally, one of the first steps in a CI workflow is to build the code. This in Salesforce is equivalent to deploy your code to an OR and make sure that the deployment worked successfully. Next, you can execute other automated quality gates. For instance, you can statically analyze your code. You can format your code following some specified rules, or you can execute tests. CI is a term normally used to refer to the process, but also to the tools that you can use to implement automated workflows. CI workflows can be executed at various stages of the software development life cycle. For example, they can be triggered when creating a pull request or when changes are pushed or merged into a branch. By running these workflows early, you can identify issues sooner and address them at a lower cost. Continuous integration tools enable you to define workflows. There are many third-party integration tools available, such as Travis, CircleCI, Jenkins, and many more. And you can find information in the documentation about how to work with these tools. Today, we're going to follow with our DevOps series example, and we're going to implement continuous integration using GitHub Actions. With GitHub Actions, you can define workflows in YAML. Firstly, you need to specify when the workflow will run. In our case, the workflow will execute when a pull request is created, edited, or synchronized. Secondly, you define the steps that the workflow should perform. Here's an overview of the steps that this particular workflow defines. First, we check out the source code from the repository using a third-party GitHub action. Yes, GitHub Actions has a marketplace where developers can publish and share actions. Second, we install Volta, which is an old version manager, and download the libraries specified as dev dependencies in the package.json file of our project. Salesforce projects use Node.js to include libraries for development and automation. Next, we perform code formatting checks with Prettier, which is one of the libraries we downloaded with Node. Prettier ensures consistent code formatting across the project, no matter the developer who wrote the code. Next, we execute linting, which is a specific code analysis for lining components. That way, we ensure correctness, security, and performance of the JavaScript code. There are Salesforce-specific plugins available for both Prettier and Slint. Then we run Lightning Web Components test with Jest, 
and we calculate the Lightning Web Component code coverage. We follow that by conducting static analysis of our Apex code with PMD, a popular library for ensuring Apex code quality. Custom rule sets can be defined for PMD. Here you have an example. Next, we install the Salesforce CLI because we will use it to create a scratcher, deploy the code and configuring permissions in the org. A possible optimization is to have a pool of scratch orgs already pre-created so that CI jobs can run faster. We have used scratch orgs in this example, but you can do exactly the same with sandboxes. You just connect to an existing sandbox and deploy the code to it. In that case, there is another optimization that you can implement, which is to perform only Delta deployments. This means only deploying the code that has changed and also executing quality gates only on those changed files. A common way to implement that is by using a popular uh, plugin that the community created called SFDX Git Delta. If you want to take a look at an example GitHub action that uses sandboxes, make sure to check out this link. Continuing with our workflow, next we execute Apex tests, we calculate Apex code coverage and we delete the scratch org. From this point, you could create more steps such as, for instance, to create an unlocked package for deployment and distribution. We will cover deployments in the following video. So let's try it out. Let's make a change in our code and commit and push it to the repo. Now our workflow is running. This will take some seconds. So let's increase the speed. There it is. This is the result of our workflow run. If one of the steps had failed, our workflow would have stopped running. At that point, you can fix the error and run the workflow again. One cool feature that GitHub has is that you can prevent merging a pull request if certain steps haven't uh, passed successfully. But luckily, our workflow succeeded and now we're confident that we can merge our pull requests, making sure that our code quality standards are being followed and also that our tests pass. That's all for today's video. If you want to know more about continuous integration, take a look at this list of resources that I leave you here. If you liked the video, Make sure to give it a like and subscribe to our channel to receive notifications. If you want to watch more videos similar to this one, check out our developer quick takes playlist. And with that, I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you in the next video.